Hello viewers, this is second part of 1.2.1 uh, networks. So in part one we discussed uh, until uh, wireless networks and the technology that is in use or electromagnetic waves. Um, now let's uh, discuss about wide networks. So wide networks, there are three uh, main types of cables used in uh, wide networks. Uh, first one is this, twisted pair cables. These are called twisted pair cables. These are the conductors and these uh, plastic over these conductors are called insulator and then we have got this cable jacket. So, these are conductors, insulators, and jacket. So, these are uh, twisted pair cables. Now, twisted pair cables are most common cable types in local area networks. However, on, on the three types of cable, which we are going to discuss, it has the lowest data transfer rate and suffers the most uh, from external interference, such as uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation. However, it is uh, the cheapest option. And there are two types of uh, such cables. Unshielded pair and shielded. Unshielded twisted pair and shielded twisted pair. Unshielded uh, is used by residential users like us at our home or offices. Shielded is uh, commercially used. So now we have uh, next cable, which is called coaxial cable. Coaxial cables are uh, uh, most commonly used in uh, networks around the city, or you might have if, uh, observed. Uh, this is uh, with the, uh, the TV channels, the cable that is provided by uh, in Pakistan, mostly by the uh, cable uh, providers uh, for TV media channels, the cable that they put in our home is uh, coaxial cable. Uh, coaxial cables are mostly common used in um, television companies. Get the idea? The cost of coaxial cable is higher than the twisted pair, but they offer a better data transfer rate and are affected by less external interference. You need to take these notes because you might be asked for the drawbacks of these cables. So I have discussed drawbacks uh, and uses of um, uh, twisted pair, and now I'm discussing about uh, coaxial cable. So try to take a few notes with it. Uh, so let me revise. The cost uh, of coaxial cable is higher than the twisted pair cable, but they offer a better transfer rate and are affected less by the external interference. Coaxial cables also have about 80 times uh, the transmission capacity of twisted pair. Coaxial cables suffer from uh, the greatest signal attenuation, but offer the best anti-jamming capabilities. So, next cable is fiber optic. Fiber optic cables are the most commonly used to send data over long distances. 
do you know that uh, our internet works with uh, a network of fiber optic cables which are laid uh, under the sea one of them i know is uh, c southeast asia me middle east and western europe we use uh, cable see maybe 2 3 and 4 for pakistan pakistan gets is its uh, uh, internet using cmv fiber optic system you google it and check how it works anyways uh, fiber optic cables are mostly uh, used to send data over long distances because they offer the best data transfer rate the smallest signal attenuation and have a very high resistance to external interference the main drawback is its cost unlike the uh, other two types of cable that we have just discussed fiber optic uses pulses of light rather than pulses of electricity transmitted so other two uh, cables uh, um, are using this uh, copper and this one and, and electricity and this one is uh, using either plastic or glass and light to transfer the data they have about 26000 times the transmission capacity of twisted pair cables fiber optics can be single or multiple mode multi mode or single mode now single mode uses a single mode light source and has a smaller central core which results in less light reflection along the cable this allows the data to travel faster and further making them a good choice for uh, telecommunications multi core allows for multi mode light source uh, uh, the construction causes higher light reflections in the core so they work best over shorter distances for um, let's say local area network and all so this is uh, a good time to understand that uh, fiber optic is the best bet provided uh, you have got the modem for it which is costlier and its networking is costlier than other but when it comes to telecommunication companies or providing dsl at your home or um uh, communication between the countries for high bandwidth internet this is always a good idea that uh, to use uh, fiber optic cable so um consult your book and find out few of the differences and list them down and do remember those because this, there are high chances that they might ask for the differences between these their uses and drawbacks so it is a good time to uh, discuss uh, between uh, the difference between the wired and wireless uh, uh, systems numerous factors should be considered when deciding if a network should use wired or wireless connectivity so let's say that if it is wireless network it is easier to expand networks and it is not necessary to connect devices using cables all are wireless devices have increased mobility devices have increased mobility provided they are within the range uh increased chances of interference from uh, external sources if it is wireless data is less secure than with the wired systems obviously uh, over the wireless networks it is more easy to intercept the signal data transmission rate is slower than the wired networks 
although it is improving nowadays, um, there are new standards keep coming, but it's still wide uh, networks transfer faster data than wireless networks. Signals can be stopped by thick walls uh, in wireless networks. Uh, or the signal strength when they penetrate through walls um, might get reduced. On contrary, wide networks are more reliable and stable. Data transfer rates uh, tend to be faster with no dead spots because if it is possible that if it is wide network and you, your home has got many curves in it, so it might uh, be possible that uh, in some spots at some spots at your home, wireless network are not uh, available. Those spots where uh, Wi-Fi doesn't appear uh, are called dead spots. Tend to be uh, cheaper overall, wide networks are cheaper. Devices uh, are not mobile, they must uh, close enough to allow cable connections. Uh, lots of wires can lead uh, tripping hazards or overheating of connections. You might have seen, um, um, a router or switch with a bunch of wires keep coming into it and from that um, uh, wires are running back and forth between the computers and all. Yes, it is a hassle to um, maintain wide networks. And there are a few other considerations as well. Like if mobile phones or tablets are connected to a network, it will need to be, uh, it, it, it need to be um, to offer uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth ability. So we have to have wireless networks there. There may be regulation in some countries regarding which wireless transmission frequencies uh, can be used legally, uh, while there are countries which uh, actually uh, don't allow. Permission from authorities sometimes required that uh, um, need to be taken before making use of it. Um, and there are numerous uh, competing signals in the area. So if, if you are in a dense depopulated uh, area, there are chances that your devices wirelessly may have uh, interference and the chances, the security breach is possible. So it is a good idea. So um, uh, that's about it. Uh, uh, the wireless and wired uh, um, systems. Uh, cables and uh, their comparison. Now, the last part remains, which is uh, show understanding of bit streaming, both real time and on demand, and show understanding of the importance of bit rate, broadband speed on bit streaming. So, now the topic is bit streaming. Mostly bit streaming terminology is used for uh, the video data uh, which is being delivered over the networks. So bit streaming, it, um, uh, it is about video delivery over the internet. So bit streaming is contiguous uh, sequence of digital bits sent over the internet or a network that requires a high speed data communication link such as fast uh, broadband. Since bit streaming often involves very large files such as video from YouTube, it is necessary for the file to undergo some data compression before transmission. So one of the uh, video format that we use is MP4 which is quite common. It is also necessary to have some form of buffering to ensure a smooth playback of the media files. So uh, what is buffering? Now, let's say we have got a source of data streaming. There is a source of data streaming and data is being uh, streamed and this is let's say a server.
So now here is our computer. It has to have a buffer. Buffer is a temporary memory area which actually accepts the data when the data is coming in. Actually, uh, the speed at which uh, we play the media, play back the media. Let's say this is our media player. This media player plays back the data which is arriving from this source using internet. This is all coming through internet. The rate of arrival from the source is slower and media player plays the data back faster. So what happens that until the data is to this point in the buffer, which is high point, it does not start playing back at first. So data is keep coming to the buffer, is piling up. Once it reaches here, it starts playing back. And then data is keep arriving. Data is keep arriving, bits, 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 streams of bits are coming in. The data when reaches, it is being played back and it is reducing over here in the buffer when it reaches here, the source of data streaming is filling it again. So the transmission rate from file server containing the video uh, to the buffer must be greater than the rate at which the data is being transmitted uh, from buffer to media player. The larger the buffer, the better the control over the bit rate uh, being sent to the media player. The media player will always check to ensure that data lies between the minimum values. Um, this, this is sometimes called uh, low watermark and high watermark and maximum value. So uh, the media player will always, this is media player here. It uh, always makes sure that the data is between the higher and lower value because if it goes uh, lesser than this watermark, then you would see your computer showing buffering, buffering, buffering. All right. So in order to have it uh, uh, played without any interruption, the data from the data source has to be up to this watermark always, or at least between low and high. Uh, watermarks. So now let's discuss further. Your system needs you, I mean, your syllabus needs you to have an idea of uh, pros and cons of data stream. So now, let's have a few pros. No need to wait for the whole video. be downloaded. Second, no need to store large files. Locally. Thirdly, allows video files and music files to be played on demand.
no special hardware required and then piracy can be avoided on contrary we have cons cannot stream video file if broadband connection is not there it is always required video music file will pause if it is slow requires a lot of bandwidth and expense so and that's it these are the pros and cons so what is bit streaming bit streaming is uh, when we are playing sound or video it is contiguous sequence of digital bits sent over the internet to play sound and videos over your uh, local uh, machines or computers or cell phones and all so bit streaming can be uh, real time can be real time which you are just watching when it is happening or um, on demand on demand means we go to youtube or a television channel networks website and we watch the drama or the video that we have to real time is when something is happening like a cricket match or football match is going on and we are watching it live so now on demand on demand uh, digital files are stored on a server are converted to bit streaming format and they are delivered to us when we like it to have a link to uh, the encoded video is placed on the web server so that you can on, always download it the user clicks on the link and video is downloaded as bit stream uh because it is on demand the stream video is broadcast to the user as and when required it is possible to pause rewind and leave it and continue at some other time on demand might be free like over the youtube or maybe paid for some of the websites and over the youtube few of the channels are uh, giving their videos if you pay them for it uh on contrary real time an event is captured by camera and microphone and is sent to the computer like uh, what the the video that i am uh, recording now will be available on demand if i would have conducted this uh, zoom uh, session that would be real time so many of the teachers have chosen to go with zoom in real time at their class hours and i have chosen to uh, record it and keep it over the server so that uh, youtube server Uh, so that whenever you require it it is available the video signal is converted to streaming media file in real time the encoded file is uploaded from the computer to the dedicated video streaming server it has to be done in the real time the server sends the encoded live video to the user's device since uh, uh, the video footage is live it is not possible to pause rewind and leave it there until unless the device that you have is supporting it locally but it is not possible from the uh, server side so this concludes uh, this whole networking um, uh, networks chapter 1.2.1 i hope that uh, uh, this chapter will help you to understand this uh, particular topic 
Do not forget to get through a few of the questions in the past papers. Uh, and most of the times, uh, definitions uh, um, are appearing in exam, but you have to clear up your um, understanding so that if a conceptual question, scenario-based question shows up, you are able to answer it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any question or anything, please uh, do post it in your respective groups or um, in the comments below this uh, video. Um, and uh, uh, visit the website for proper notes and everything. Thank you very much. I see you. Bye.